chain reaction. Its hormones in her bloodstream make the muscular walls of her blood vessels relax and expand. Marion's blood pressure starts to drop. The fetus is taking advantage of the body's ability to regulate itself. The drop in blood pressure makes Marion feel thirsty. The extra fluid she drinks is retained in her bloodstream. Her blood pressure returns to normal, but her blood is now more dilute than it was. The factories that produce red blood cells go into overdrive until her blood returns to a healthy concentration. In order to pump this extra blood around her body, Marion's heart will have to beat faster. And as its muscle works harder, her heart will actually increase in bulk and size. Hi there, Sparky. Oh, look, he's got his hands above his head. At the command of this tiny fetus, Marion's body has undergone an incredible internal transformation. Although she doesn't look that different, her heart is pumping an extra 70,000 pints of blood a day. It's very active, isn't it? The temperature all over her body has risen in places like her hands by several degrees. For Marion, the worst part of her pregnancy is over. More important, her body is now fully equipped to feed the fetus as it grows to 100 times this size. Three months into her pregnancy, Marion feels fantastically healthy. Pregnancy has become a pleasure. But even her sense of well-being is controlled by her fetus. Over the nine months of pregnancy, it will produce more estrogen than a non-pregnant woman can make in an entire lifetime. Flooded with estrogen, Marion's brain becomes more sensitive to the mood-enhancing brain chemical, serotonin. She actually feels happier. She doesn't just feel better, she looks better too. Increased blood flow to her lips make them redder than normal. Each hair grows thicker and faster, giving it a natural shine. This change may have a purpose, making Marion more attractive to Ian, encouraging him to stay to the bitter end. Marion is about to change again, visibly this time. Till now, her womb, normally the size of a tangerine, has easily accommodated her fetus. But in the next three months, the fetus will grow to around 60 times its present size and her womb must expand too. But her womb can't grow new cells. So each individual cell must stretch until it's eight times its normal length. Marion's other organs have to make room for her expanding womb. First, her intestines are pushed aside, then her stomach and her liver. Even her heart, already dealing with an increased workload, is twisted onto its side. At six months, Marion's torso is packed full. Her lungs, also squeezed by her enlarged womb, are having to work harder too. Like any living creature, the fetus needs to get rid of waste products. 
It uses Marion's bloodstream as its dumping ground. This waste includes carbon dioxide, toxic in high doses. To get rid of it, Marion must inhale and exhale 20% more air. She isn't just eating for two, she's also breathing for two. As well as pressing up on her lungs, Marion's womb is pressing down on her bladder, so she frequently feels that her bladder is full. With just two months to go, the fetus is still less than half its birth weight. It needs to put on a half pound each week until it is born. The source from which it feeds is Marion's body. The fetus needs calcium to harden its bones. Marion is eating plenty, but it's still not enough for her fetus. So it turns to her long-term calcium stores her skeleton. Deep inside her bones are cells called osteoclasts, which are capable of dissolving bone away. Now these cells go into overdrive, releasing calcium into her bloodstream to be carried to the fetus. Marion feels no ill effects, but her bones are slightly weaker than normal. Ian, when do you think we'll get the nursery finished? Well, not now, darling. We're at three o'clock in the morning. Sorry. As well as calcium from her bones, the fetus is helping itself to proteins from Marion's blood. Without these proteins, liquid flows out through her blood vessel walls into the spaces around her cells, making them swell with fluid especially at the wrists and ankles. In her wrists, the swelling squeezes nerves, making her hands and fingers a little numb. Oh. Sorry. Where are you going? Uh, wait now, I might as well go and do the nursery. Don't be silly. Come back to bed. <laughs> At eight and a half months, the fetus has grown to the size of a football. It's toning its muscles with the occasional practice kick. What are you doing down there, Sparky? Marion is having a Braxton Hicks contraction. These mild, irregular contractions are a workout for her womb to keep it toned and fit for the exertions ahead. Each muscle cell that makes up her womb is in training in an attempt to make labor as easy as possible. For nine months, Marion's body has provided food and lodging for her fetus. Now it's about to make one final demand on her body. The fetus triggers its own birth, so no one knows exactly what makes it choose its moment. One theory is that it's simply hungry, having grown so large that Marion's body can no longer satisfy its appetite. Good. In its ultimate act of control over Marion, the fetus sends out a chemical signal. The hormone oxytocin.